Welcome back to Lumifa Classic. Today, I'm in a workshop with DXJS and I'll be doing a service that's often overlooked. I'll be changing the transmission fluid and filter. I'll show you how you can easily service your transmission at home with some simple tools and also share a little secret how you can do this job without making a huge mess. Here is everything you need to complete the job. There is a list in the description of all the parts I used, so you can just click on that if you want to buy the parts yourself and if you're doing this job at home. Here's a new filter. Here's that new gasket. I like to use some Highlander Blue gasket material on the gasket just to make it seal perfectly. Uh, this stuff is really great because it never cures hard, so you can get it off again. You can often even reuse a gasket. There's a link down below, like I said. Then you just need your basic socket set and some sockets, a breaker bar to get some things off, some extensions are good, uh, just a normal set of wrenches and a swiveling end wrench like this comes in really handy in certain places, but if you don't have one, these normal ones are right too. And now I'm gonna show you that one special tool that will make this job a lot easier. Now you may be wondering, what's the secret? What's that special tool? Well, I'll show you. It's this, it's a vacuum fluid extractor. It's often used for oil changes, uh, also transmission services, getting brake fluid out. It's a really versatile tool. If you don't have one, I highly recommend that you uh, pick one up. I'll have some links down below to some really good ones you can pick up. Um, they're not very expensive at all and really, really useful. So basically, um, it's a container that you pull a vacuum on and you hook up different hoses up here and then you can push, I um, mean, pull out any fluid that you want. So basically, I'm gonna hook this up, uh, put that hose down the dipstick tube, and basically empty out the transmission of as much fluid as I can before I drop the pan. Because usually, when you drop the pan on the transmission like this, it's just a huge mess. It's fluid just flowing everywhere. You need a lot of catch cans, and usually, you end up making a huge mess. So by emptying out the pan as much as you can before uh, dropping it down to change the filter, you can try to minimize the mess. Start by locating your transmission dipstick. On these V12 engines, it's on the right-hand side of the engine all the way back by the bulkhead over here. On the six cylinders, I believe it's on the other side of the engine bay. It's just a long spring like most transmission dipstick that just comes out like that. Now we can take the hose from the vacuum fluid extractor and basically just put it in the dipstick tube and try and get it down as far as you can until you're at the bottom of the pan. Like so, and just lift it up a tiny bit. Now you simply pump that handle a couple times to create a vacuum. And now you can see that old dirty transmission fluid running out of the transmission into the can. Now I've gotten as much fluid as I can out with the vacuum extractor. So it's time to get under the car to drop the pan and hopefully there won't be that much fluid left in it, if any at all. But before I get in the car, uh, it's time for a quick safety notice about dropping the pans on these transmissions. Like many Jags, the XJS has a giant spring that supports the transmission. The whole transmission mount is basically that spring a couple brackets and some rubber to isolate it. It does a really good job at isolating road noise and drivetrain noise from getting into the cabin. However, it can be a little bit of safety hazard when you have to remove it. And yes, you do need to remove it in order to service the transmission. On the V12, at least with this transmission, it's in the way and it covers the back of the pan. So please just be really careful when you remove it. Uh, be aware that it's a powerful spring and that the transmission can drop pretty quickly. And um, that's all. It's not very difficult to remove, but just be aware of how to remove it and follow the instructions in the manual and you'll be fine. Now let's get under the car and remove that mount and drop that pan so we can get to the old filter. Here we are under the car. Here's the transmission pan right here that we're trying to drop. These bolts all the way around here. But in the back, here is that transmission mount. So basically the spring is under here 
So you just loosen the mount with the four bolts around the edges here. But unfortunately on this car, and like many others as well, the exhaust is in the way. Uh, it covers this bolt right here. The other ones I think are fine. So I'm just gonna drop the right side of the exhaust in the front and support it, just have it hanging down a little bit and then get this mount off. Here's all the bits off the car. Of course, there's the sump, the old gasket. Here is that old filter. Doesn't look too bad. Still has filter material left here. If you're really unlucky, these can disintegrate. I've seen that in some pictures. And then that's pretty bad. So just check that your filter is still in one piece, that there's still paper in here. That paper is still good. And yeah, the gasket here was actually still soft. So that was still fine. The sump looks fairly clean. Just gave that a really quick wipe. I'm gonna clean it off more on the outside as well and take off that gasket. Here is that weird mount I was talking about. Now it's a little easier to show what it actually looks like. So this sits on a gearbox. And so this part is basically the part that is still on the gearbox and, and this part is part of the chassis of the car. So that sits like that. And then the spring compresses up and down. And basically that's what holds the gearbox up and that's what makes it such a good system. No vibration gets into the car from the drivetrain or anything. But like I said, it can be a little tricky to get off, but if you, or just careful and you use a jack like I did, it's no problem at all. Uh, you can check that the spring's okay, that it's, there's nothing wrong with it. This one looks completely fine. And just check that the bushing in here is still good and the rubber here is still good. So I'm not gonna be changing that on this car. Everything's still really nice. I'm just gonna clean everything up and put it back on the car.
Now everything has been cleaned off and the pan is ready for a new gasket. But first, you gotta put the new filter in. Here's the bolt for it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of transmission fluid on this gasket here just to make it slide on a lot easier. With the filter in place, it's time to put the gasket on. Like I said, I like to use a little bit of Hylomer Blue. So I'm just gonna put a little bit all around here and then just to hold the gasket in place and a little bit on the other side of that cork gasket as well. All right, now that shouldn't leak, the pan is ready to go back on the car. Now everything is back in place, including the transmission mount and the exhaust is back as well. So now we can go up top and fill it up with fluid. The last step is to put fluid in the car. Um, I like to use what's recommended by the manufacturer. In the manual, it says to use Castrol ATF uh, Dextron 2. So that's what I got here. Uh, a good tip is to measure the amount of fluid you took out so you know how much to put in. And then of course you can check it with the engine running but I measured and I got about five liters out from the vacuum extractor and I'm guessing another half liter about came out when I took the filter out. So I'm gonna start by pouring in five liters and then when the car is back on the ground, I'm gonna start it up, run it, cycle through the gears and check it on the transmission dipstick with the engine running like you're supposed to. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, you can check it in your manual, but basically you run up the car temperature, um, cycle through the gears, basically putting the gear selector in every gear for about a second or so. And then you go up and you check the fluid on the hot side and fill if necessary. So now to the car and we'll fill it up with five liters to start with. And this is the last of the fifth liter going into the transmission. That'll be a good starting point since I think I took out about five and a half liters to have five liters in there to check because you don't want to overfill the transmission as well because then you're just throwing away fluid that you have to take out again. And that's it. That's how you change the transmission fluid in the filter on the Jaguar XJS V12. It's the same on the XJ12. It's also really similar on the six cylinder cars. At least on the XJ6, you don't need to remove the transmission mount. I'm a little bit unsure on the six cylinder XJS, but I believe it's the same. So that's a lot of an easier job. Because most of the time that you spend doing this thing is actually getting the mount in and out with a jack and it's, it's a bit time consuming. So if you don't have to do that, it's a lot quicker. And of course, if you recently did change your filter and you just need to um, get that fluid out and change it again, you can do it with the vacuum extractor like I did and you don't need to remove the pan at all. That's what I'll be doing in the next time I'm doing a service on the transmission since that filter is brand new. I'll just be changing the fluid again. And you can do that a couple times before you have to change that filter, maybe two or three times, because uh, they don't really clog up that quickly and they're meant to be in there a long time. If you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, I highly recommend that you do. I put out new videos every Thursday on this XJS, my XJ12, and my S-Type. So go to my channel below and check out some of my previous videos if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'm Adam and this was Loom with a Classic. I'll see you soon.